upstream signaling of AKT. The following is an overview of how AKT signals in the cell. A number of receptors at the cell membrane signal through AKT, including many receptor tyrosine kinases, RTKs, cytokine receptors, G-protein coupled receptors, GPCRs, B-cell receptors, and integrin receptors. These receptors all signal to AKT via a protein kinase called PI3 kinase and affect the phosphorylation state of numerous downstream targets. Now let's look in more detail at how a signal from a cell membrane receptor leads to the activation of AKT, a process called upstream signaling. Membrane receptors signal through phosphoinositide 3 kinase, which is known as PI3K, to activate AKT. PI3K phosphorylates phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, known as PIP2, to generate phosphatidylinositol 3,4,5-triphosphate, also called PIP3. PIP3 binds to the pH domains of several proteins, including AKT and PDK1. This PIP3, which is membrane-anchored, binds to the pH domain of AKT and causes the recruitment of AKT to the cell membrane. The image here shows confocal immunofluorescent analysis, or IFIC, of C2C12 cells that have been treated with either the PI3K inhibitor LY294002 or with insulin using the AKT pan-rabbit monoclonal antibody product number 4691. AKT PAN antibody has been labeled green. Actin filaments have been labeled red with alexafluor 555 phylloidin. With LY294002 treatment, PI3K inhibition does not produce PIP3 and AKT is not recruited to the membrane. Note the green cytoplasmic staining with LY294002 treatment. Insulin treatment causes PI3K to generate PIP3, which recruits AKT to the membrane. Note the green cluster staining on the membrane with insulin. The AKT PAN antibody detects all three isoforms of AKT. At the membrane, PDK1 phosphorylates AKT at threonine 308. Threonine 308 is on the AKT activation loop and is within the AKT kinase domain. This IFIC analysis shows C2C12 cells that have been treated with either insulin or the PI3K inhibitor LY294002 using phosphoakt threonine 308 rabbit monoclonal antibody product number 2965 labeled in green. Insulin treatment causes signaling through PI3K, resulting in PDK1 phosphorylation of AKT threonine 308 at the membrane. Note clusters of green-yellow stain at the membrane in the left panel. With LY294002 treatment, PI3K is inhibited and phosphorylation of AKT threonine 308 does not occur. Note loss of green signal in the right panel. P10 is a phosphatase that converts PIP3 back to PIP2. Therefore, P10 inactivates AKT and serves as an off switch for the signaling pathway. Loss of P10 results in constitutive activation of AKT and is often seen in human cancers, an example of which will be shown later in this tutorial. Full activation of AKT requires a second phosphorylation at serine 473 by mTORC2. mTORC2 is the rapamycin insensitive complex that consists of mTOR, Richter, G-beta-L, also called MLST8, and SYN1. Serine-473 is within the C-terminal regulatory domain of AKT. Seen in this image is IFIC analysis of C2-C12 cells, either LY294002 treated or insulin treated, using phospho-AKT serine-473 rabbit monoclonal antibody, product number 4060 in green. Inhibition of PI3K by LY294002 does not cause AKT to be recruited to the membrane and phosphorylated by mTORC2. 
Note, lack of green signal with LY294002 treatment. Insulin treatment results in AKT recruitment to the membrane and phosphorylation by mTORC2 at serine-473. Note cluster of green stain at the membrane in the insulin-treated panel.